So welcome to this course on electronic circuits. Hopefully you know that this is one of your basic course in your curriculum. We have so many basic courses across different uh, semesters. And uh, in this particular semester, in second year, first semester, you have uh, hopefully six uh, such uh, basic paper. Out of that, uh, this paper, electronic circuits, is falling under program four. Right. Apart from that, you have other papers like uh, circuit theory, uh, fundamentals of instrumentation, you have digital electronics, and you have, I think, one paper on mathematics as well. So, before I start anything, Regarding uh, this particular course, let me just, uh, in fact, I am uh, telling very frankly that uh, uh, this particular class is an uh, interactive class, I should say. I will not say, I will not discuss anything uh, regarding the technicalities. That I will discuss from the next class onwards, and I have only a few minutes left today. So, before I start uh, discussing this particular uh, subject or course, let me just uh, yeah, yeah. Open it. Yeah. Let me just refer to that particular uh, quote. I don't know how many of you have heard this. This is one of the famous quotes by one American novelist, Gail Godwin. Good teaching is one course preparation and uh, three course pure theater. How many of you have uh, known this particular uh, statement before today? Please raise your hands. None of you. That's strange, or it's true. Good teaching is one fourth preparation. Preparation from our side, from our teacher's side. Right. And uh, three fourths pure theater. You understand now what is meant by theater. And whenever uh, we used to teach, way before COVID era, that time it was a theater. During COVID time, it becomes movie. <laughs> right? Because that time, yeah, OH series, you can also say. Because that time, we are supposed to take the class in online mode and we have to record those. For the benefit of those students who didn't have this access, I mean, we are in Jadup University, we are always keen to make no distinction between those students who have the facility of having accessing uh, those uh, digital aids. So that's why uh, we have recorded all those lectures and uh, accordingly we have also distributed those lectures uh, to all the students, right? So ultimately, al although, because this statement was uh, was uh, made long back, before before the COVID era, so that time it was thought that uh, the teaching is a kind of theater. But during COVID, uh, during that time, it was kind of movie, right? And then, the question is that, uh, why should I attend this course? What is redundant? It's good to see so many faces today here as an introductory class, but you understand that there are so many redundant things. So many redundant things, so that you really bother to attend any class. That is our experience, that is my experience, my personal experience, and hopefully uh, this is the experience of uh, all of our faculty members in this department or in fact the university. What is redundant? Why should I attend this class? First one, study materials. Is it redundant nowadays? What do you feel? Is it redundant? No, sir. Yes or no? Hopefully, yes. Plenty of study materials. Yes. When we were students at that point of time, almost say 15 years back, at that point of time, you know, getting some notes, class notes or whatever it may be, it's really difficult. You don't find the, the corresponding uh, reference book or, or textbook in the library. Only few copies are there. 
So that time, almost 10 or 15 years back, we are bound to attend classes. And it is told that if you attend any class, uh, particularly in engineering uh, uh, education, that is the only thing that you require for getting a pass. It was not that tough, you know. As compared to your class 10 or class 12, it was really, really very tough. But uh, uh, whenever uh, you study engineering, at that point of time, uh, if you simply attend the classes of the professors, then it will be very easy to uh, get pass marks. Not only pass marks, say you can get good marks, like 80 percent, 90 percent, something like that. It was that easy. And at that point of time, the study material was not that demanding. Only one copy, two copies are there of a particular textbook or reference book, and we have to search for that in the library. There was no concept of these ebooks and all. But nowadays, over the last 10 or 15 years, the situation is completely different. Now you have so many study materials, class notes, you can take it from your seniors as well. Right? Hopefully, you have collected as of now. You have collected the class because it is expected and teachers, they, I mean, suppose this subject I am teaching for the last 10 years. From 2015 onwards, I am teaching this subject. Previously, it was, it was taught to the BTEC students, those, the post bs years BTEC. I have uh, taught them for only one year. And then the subject was, uh, I mean, I uh, taught that subject to the third year first semester students. That time, the subject's name was Electronic Service 2. <laughs> Part of this course, not the entire course. Part of the course was covered by ETC, ETC uh, faculty, and the part of the part of the course, I mean, the electronic circuit was divided into two different segments: circuits one and circuits two. And from our department, we used to cater circuits two only, and I was the teacher, 2016 onwards. So for the last eight or nine years, I have been teaching that subject. And uh, the new curriculum came in the year 2018, and 2019 onwards, for the last five years, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, last five years, I have been teaching this subject. Same teacher, same class, almost the same way of teaching. It's a theater, no? Almost the same kind of activity. Same class notes. And if you just consider the, the question pattern, almost the same. Nothing new. So I should attend the class. Solve problems, yes, the same thing. You can get those, no? Even if you do not attend the class, suppose in your class you have 60 students. You have 60 students and suppose uh, out of 60 students, only say 10 students or say 15 students, they are in the class. So, uh, I can solve some problems in the, in the mm, class and you will see that uh, those problems will be shared by all of you. So, I should attend the class. Video lectures, yes. You can already, uh, you can access the video lectures, open to all. There is no need to attend over here. There is no need to go to the cinema hall. You can watch in a mobile as well, laptop as well. The video of YouTube? Yeah, it's available on YouTube. For my, for, uh, my case, it is available on YouTube. For other teachers, it might be a Google Drive or something other than that. Okay. It's available. The main point is that. All of them are available in print. And the last point is very important, four hours of valuable time per week. Time is valuable. Time is precious, na? Yes, sir. So I should do just uh, simply lose this uh, four hours of valuable time per week for a religious class, any class, say for example. So these things are really redundant. Do you have any other argument? Do you agree? Yes. Yes, sir. Do you agree, no? <laughs> well, so these things are redundant. You don't have any need to attend classes. All of them are available. Class mode available, starting materials available, even video lectures are available nowadays. Post COVID era, video lectures are available. What is exclusive? Why should I attend the class? These things are last five things that I have already mentioned. These are really available. Available for any teacher. 
for any course across the board, any teacher, any, any course. But for my paper, what is exclusive? The first one is very important, abstraction of learning. Do you understand what is meant by this abstraction of learning? You learn something, no? You people are in instrumentation electronics. There are some people they are studying, say, mechanical engineering. Production people, civil engineering people, different different subjects. Even in electronics, you will see that I used to teach electronic circuits course in uh, second year first semester, and in third year uh, first semester now I am teaching uh, analog MOS circuit design course. Electric paper. It's not a code one. Electric paper. So you see that whenever you understand some concept over here, because this paper is basically on BJT, bipolar junction transistor, this course is basically on BJT, and that paper is basically on MOS. But as far as the abstraction is concerned, you will see that if you, if you understand the concept well, if you understand the abstraction well, then this abstraction can be applicable to both BJT, uh, BJT circuits as well as for the MOS circuits. And whenever you study the subjects like signals and systems, something like that, or BSP, you'll see that the way an electrical system behaves and the way a mechanical system behaves, abstract, if you just consider the abstraction, the abstraction is this. You study control systems in second year, second semester. So this abstraction of learning is very important. That you might not get a data. Okay, and the second point is the philosophy behind the subject. I used to refer philosophy every time I find a pertinent such concept. There are certain things, some mathematical equations, some formulas, some theorems that you study in the class notes, in reference book and textbook, you study all those things. But the point is that if you can correlate this concept, with something that is happening around you. Even if you do not know electronics, even if you do not study engineering, then also you'll see that those things are happening around you. From your childhood, you're observing those things. Now, if you can correlate that concept to the concept that we are teaching here, philosophically, then the way you grasp this concept is becoming much more efficient. So that second point is, is explicit, I can tell you, in my paper as, at least, philosophy behind the subject. Whenever I find some connection between something happening around us, and if I can give that particular example into your course, I will always do that. And I always did in the past. Third point is feeling of connectedness, yes. Just like you are attending a theater, something like that. It's not like, it's not that you are just uh, observing the movie, you are just watching the movie in your mobile phone. And this, uh, this feeling of connectedness is very important as far as our uh, social structure after the COVID era is concerned. That's very important. Fourth point is, Quizzes and brainstorming, yes, that is needed. Some places that is needed. Although it's not a part of evaluation, but that is needed. Brainstorming is very important. The kind of group study, that is very important. If you study something by yourself only, if there is no need of mentor, you have only one, uh, say, class note or some uh, video lectures and all, and then if you just uh, consider, okay, uh, that is sufficient, you feel that uh, ultimately your understanding of the subject is not complete. So that is very important. Sometimes I will, I will also uh, capture some quizzes and brainstorming during my class. And the final one is the same thing, four hours of valuable time for me. The thing is that valuable in which respect? Valuable in which respect? The time is really valuable. Time is precious. Now you have to think whether you deposit this time, whether you invest this time in this class 
or some redundancy. That is redundant. That is also redundant. Sometimes it is also exclusive. What is required for attending the class? This slide is for those who would like to attend my next classes. First point is that a mind devoid of a distraction is full mind. That is needed. Piece of paper, pen, calculator. Required because you have to solve some problems. Although I, uh, I will use this ICD uh, based teaching, I have the class note, I mean I have all the slides over there, and I can also share this thing to you. Hopefully you have already got from your seniors. Huh? Yes, yes, you have already got. That's good. But still you have to calculate something. So paper, pen, calculator. Don't use mobile for calculation. Recapitulation of the prerequisites concepts, okay? I required here only one subject or say two subjects. One is your knowledge in basic electrical engineering. This KCL, KBL, Chaplin, Norton. That concept you require here and the basic electronics. That you are studying say, first year, first semester. So these are the only two prerequisites subject for this particular course. Basic electrical engineering, basic electronics and uh, simple mathematics. That is all what is needed. Okay? 100 minutes of time without active use of mobile. That's very important. Active use of mobile. Two hours class. So 100 minutes of time without active use of mobile. Fifth one is important from your perspective. If you want to get fast marks in a very fast attempt, you have to attend. Why? I'll show you later on. If you'd like to secure pass marks, 40% is the pass marks. Right. In the very fast study, that is also important. Hopefully, I've also got this feedback from your seniors. It's difficult to get the pass marks. Not for me, but for because of your, I mean, I should say, your attitude towards attending the class. And if you want to pursue your career in the electronics industry, then obviously this course is the fundamental one. Now if you pause this, all this, one, two, three, four, five, six, then you can attend the next classes. This is up to you only. Uh, coming back to the our uh, Four sheet syllabus to some extent. Name of the subject is electronic circuits. Three lecture, one tutorial, four credit course, four hours per week. That is a course code I W D P C. Four basic course, theoretical course, two one four. Right? These are the objectives. The course aims to provide this knowledge about all those four things. And since we are now our department is. Uh, NV admitted. So therefore, we have to divide all these uh, courses into different course outcomes. Each and every course. So in this particular paper, I am having five different course outcomes. CO1, CO2, CO3, CO4 and CO5. I am not going to the details of this. Okay? That is a part of uh, your syllabus. Electronic circuits. And the next part is, will be alarming to you, hopefully. That is the summary. That is a summary as well as the attendance of your seniors. You just take a look at the attendance. CIE, out of around 60 students, only 19 students, they have qualified CO1. Only 9 students, they have qualified CO2, CO3. And only 15 and 16 students, they have qualified CO4 and CO5. In this class test or cumulative internal examination. So this is this is 2020. That means uh, those students who have passed in 2022. COVID batch. Not COVID batch. I have not used this COVID uh, data over here. The students who learned this subject in the year 2019. For them, the exam was held in 2020. Yes. Okay. So that's why uh, it was a 2020 batch. Second year. 
but attendance was good, I should say. Out of 50, 5 or something, 58 hopefully. Uh, okay, the mean value is around uh, 20, 20 to 25, something like that. Just take a look at those attendments. At least the semester attendment, 53%, 89%, 77%, 62%, 86%. Semester attendment, okay, that part was not good. This CIE part, if you just take a look at this part, this is not good. This part is not good, CIE part. But uh, this SE part, to some extent, it is much better as compared to CIE. Because they have actually attended the proposed classes. Right. Then, I am moving to the next batch. And this batch is post-COVID. This is pre-COVID. I have intentionally, I have not included the data for 2021 and 2022 batch. Because that's a, that, that will be a kind of parts data. You see that all of them are get, getting 100% attendance. That's the parts data. So intentionally I have not included that one. Okay. Just have an impression of this particular plot. Right. And those values. Next is 2023. Take a look at the attendance. <laughs> take a look at the attendance and just take a look at the AC percentage. 66, 60, 54, 57, 60. And also these values, 11, 4, forget about the 50, it's an outlier. I am not, I am not sharing why this will be, why this will be. sum of CI is divided in just 5 parts. CI is uh, divided into cities, two clusters. Yeah. So CO1, CO2 in the first cluster, CO3, CO4, CO5 in the second cluster, something like that. Call out the 50 over there. I will share that story later on. How the 50 is coming. But here it is 11, 4, 7, 7, so single digit. Compared to this one. At least 19, 9, 9, 15, 16. Here it is only 11, 4, 7, 7. And also the AC value, if you just compare over there, here the AC value was 53, 89, 77. It is coming like 66, 60, 54, something like that. There is a high correlation. It's a statement. It's a statement. You just observe this one, the attendance and the result. Whether there is any correlation or not. You just decide amongst yourself. <coughs> Whether there is any connection. Between this attendance and the attendance. Attendance and attendance. Yes or no? Yes. Positively correlated or negatively correlated? Positively correlated. Okay. Then the last batch, your Nick, I mean the two start year students. Oh, That's the kind of between that 2020 batch and 2023 batch. Kind of trade-off. Attendance was good to some extent, and if you just take a look at the CIE part, much more improved. 47, 22, 42, 32, 30. Much better, you should say. And if you just take a look at the attendance, which year? Last year, 2024. That means your immediate senior. Those who are studying in third year. And that result was for, for your fourth year seniors, this one. <laughs> Okay, fourth year seniors. This was third year. Just ask them, your immediate seniors, ask them. I have also shown this summary up to this to them also. In my very first class, I have also demonstrated the summary up to this point. And then I have updated the list over there. And now if you take a look at the ACE part, it's much better, no? 70, 76, at least respectable. It's not like 10%, 15%. It's 70%, 90%, uh, 67% is good. That is the consequence. This is the consequence. This summary part is the consequence. What is the cause? What is the result? There is, I mean, what is the cause? Cause is the attendance. You have all these documents, all those materials available to you. But you need to attend classes. Okay, I don't know what can I show to your juniors in the very next year. <laughs> if I'm allowed, <laughs> if I'm allowed to teach this subject for another year. 
Okay. Now, with this, hopefully, I would like to come to the final slide. Open to any question and answer. Any question from your side? How do you like the class states? What is the structure of the class states? The two class states. Two class states, 30 marks each, and the average of these two will be given as. Yeah, you yeah. And uh, uh, so one is divided into parts. And I will ask you. Silence, silence, silence. So, question one or another? Yeah. Did you have any question? Uh, so, cross are three marks each, and these class states, uh, I mean, in the first class states, suppose CO1 and CO2 will be covered, might be a part of CO3, and the rest part of CO3, CO4, CO5 will be covered in the second class. 30 marks each, 30 plus 30, 60, divided by 2, 30 average, that will be your CI marks. And your semester, uh, 100 marks, scale down to 70, the 70 plus 30, total 100. That is the standard procedure. Or if you have a reference book, reference book, I will definitely. I mean, tomorrow I will give you the course sheet. That, that copy I have shown now was there. This electronic circuit is a part of the course sheet. I will distribute the hard copy of this course sheet tomorrow. So, can you tell me the prerequisites for basic electronic studies? You need to know the device physics. How does BJT operate? How does diode operate? How does uh, MOS is not required? Yeah, only diode and BJT. <laughs> diode and BJT. <laughs> and for basic electrical, circuit theory, I mean basic electrical, you have different types of theorem like Fermi's <laughs> theorem, Norton's theorem, that gives us current law, gives us voltage law, that is it. Current voltage relationship, that is it. Any other question? Sir, no. Each of them have a separate cutout. <laughs> yes, separate cutout is there for our analysis, not for you. For our analysis, we have asked the example. You have to pass the over one. But for our analysis, whether you have understood CO1 properly or CO2 properly or CO3 properly, for our analysis, we have done this calculation. The back end. But that is not needed from your side. You need to get 40 out of 100. Okay? You, will, you can get 30 out of 30 in the class phase and you can get seven, uh, 10 out of 70 in the semester. Then also you can pass. It's not needed that you have to pass in the theory and lab, I mean theory and uh, semester and the class phase separately. It's not like. Total is 40. You have to acquire this 40 out of class test as well as from the semester. Okay? So, with this, let me just. Uh, uh, conclude our introductory discussion.